What's the craziest crime you or somebody in your family has committed? My father committed one of the first computer crimes in the 90s. A ton of files were corrupted due to a code he created because they fired him. FBI invaded our home and arrested him. Was sent to federal prison for 4 years, which was interesting because there was never a crime committed of its nature before. They made a forensics file episode about it. Last year my psychotic mother burned down my childhood home. That her, my dad, my niece, my sibling, and sibling's partner lived in, because she believed my dad was cheating on her. Despite no evidence and this was not the first time she accused my dad of cheating with no evidence. Effectively, she destroyed everything we had built and kept in that home. Along with my dad's dog and my sister's cat. Cat was burned up, so never found, but the dog died of asphyxiation in my niece's room under her bed. Then after the fire in what I can only construe as an act of desperation, she went to my bank and stole all of the money out of my accounts because she was secondary on the accounts. I was working on changing banks, but my new bank had yet to finalize the creation of my new account. Moral of the story is take your parents off your bank accounts when you turn 18. She's now serving time in a county jail for the arson because she took a plea deal and got a reduced sentence, which I still believe was utter crap. She played the poor old lady act to the judge and he took pity on her that she did not deserve. This is the woman who eviscerated my self esteem and made my life heck ever since I was born. She was toxic and abusive, never told me the truth about anything, and is a greedy, manipulative person. I feel no shame in saying that I do not care about her. She's lost any right to my love and respect. Sounds familiar. My ex, who is awaiting sentencing, set my car and house on fire. Total loss. Everything I and our two children had was just gone. Our dog died in the fire. He was convinced I was cheating and when I couldn't take the constant beratement and accusations anymore and decided it was over, he lost it. You never know what people are capable of or how far their mental health can decline. Twin brothers boosted a car and robbed a 711 like one stroke 2 mile from house. Ditched car 10 houses from theirs. How were they caught? Officers respond to alarm triggered by Clark. Officer. Got an alarm here what happened? Clark. Tim and Tom came in and robbed the store. Officer, how do you know it was these guys? Clark, they are 6 feet 4 inches twins who come in every day. I know their shape and voice. The car. 911 operator. 911 what is your emergency? Neighbor, was watching TV and two guys park a car in front of my house. One guy got out with like a Windex bottle and cleaned all the door handles and door areas. Then opened door and the other guy took the stuff and cleaned the inside areas. Then they ran off up the street. Dispatch. Can you describe the two individuals? Neighbor. Well it was Tim and Tom the twins that live up the street from me they're like 6 feet 4 inches and they are twins. All the mass and none of it brain matter. My mom set a dude on fire. When I was young I had a babysitter. Named Chris. He was the uncle of my two best friends. Sisters Abby and Becca. He was also abusive. He liked to do things to me in front of them. Make them listen to my cry and scream. Nothing physical. I should mention. More. Psychological. Anyway. I didn't tell anyone about it. And in fact only learned this story about 2 years ago. But it turns out that my best friends did. They told my mom and she was pee. Soon after that there's a party at my friend's parents house. My mom goes and sees Chris. He's all nice to her. They're outside in the backyard. She starts kinda joking around. Rough housing. Messing with him. She grabs some lighter fluid and sprays some on him. Ha ha ha. Just a joke. She lights a match. Ha. Huh, you wouldn't do it, would you? And she lights him on fire. According to my mom. He was put out quickly so he was fine. But she told him that's what it's like when you're scared for your life. And then she left. Apparently he flew back to Florida the next day. Your mom sounds like a great lady. I'm glad she protected you from more of that. My brother got completely inebriated one night and stupidly drove home. He woke up early in the morning to the sound of a baby crying. He looked around and noticed he didn't recognize the house. He quickly got up and walked outside to his car halfway in the driveway street and still running. Got in his car and drove away as quickly as he could. Turns out it was some random house about 5-10 minutes away from our actual house. He never knew whose house it was and never got caught. 
He also slowed down his drinking after that. In college we got a new printer and printed off a bunch of fairly convincing $20 bills, roughed them up and used them at a bunch of fast food restaurants, didn't realize how dumb it was until years later. My father, when I was still very young, used a fake name and pretended to be a wedding planner for a young couple, that young couple hired him, since he seemed trustworthy and is an excellent liar giving him access to their savings for wedding supplies and such that would be needed. Instead, he stole all of the money out of their account and then ran away with it. As far as I am aware, he was never caught and the money was never returned to them. The worst part is that the poor couple never even got their wedding and had almost nothing left afterwards. Whoa, your father was a real scumbag. My wife's cousin was arrested for the manufacturing of M. Three times and was sentenced to life. He, his mom and dad all cooked them and supplied basically the entire area. The worst part is that during his last arrest he was taking the fall for his parents. They were in large part why our small sleazy little trash heap of a town was one of the top 5 for M in the United States at the time. My dad's cousin erased all family member names from a property deed except for his father's. The paperwork had been water damaged so there was no easy way to tell what should have been there. Family law says that he also paid off some local politicians office workers to make the new deed stand. My uncle stole one of those oil candles from our table at a hard rock cafe once. When we got outside he pulled it from his jacket with it still lit. My grandpa wouldn't obey the train warnings. He would try and beat the train rather than wait. First time he got hit in his new convertible on the way to prom with my grandma. Had barely started on the payments and car was totaled. Luckily they were both okay. Second time was a little less reckless but still dumb. He was driving a semi and it broke down on the tracks. He kept trying to get the tractor trailer to start. Rather than lose his rig and load. Semi got hit by the train. Total loss and fricked up his back. Your grandpa is a freaking idiot. He's very lucky he, your grandma, and all their offspring, you, exist. A distant cousin got her terminally ill father to give her power of attorney and then stole all of his money so she wouldn't have to split it with her brother. Edit. Don't worry. She did go to jail as her rush to clean him out involved a lot of fraud and forgery. Edit 2. Man. It is slightly depressing how many of you have similar stories. What's up with people? A guy I went to school with in the 70s emptied his dementia ridden father's life savings while he lived with him, 60 some years old, and still stealing to support his coke habit. His sister found out, and he did 5 years, restitution, 80k, no way he'll live long enough to pay that back, and 8 years probation. He's dead now, but years ago my relative got in a bar fight and lost so he went to his vehicle to get his rifle. Fortunately the police arrested him on the way into the bar so his charges were a lot less. Still did jail time. That's such a chicken shit move. Losing a fight and then coming back to murder the guy. My friend got blackout drunk and stole a bulldozer that had the keys left in it. He turned it on and obviously didn't know how to drive it so he just ended up making the scoopy part go up and down for a bit before the cops came. They actually let him go too. Scoopy part. My sister shoplifts uncontrollably. She shoplifts everything everywhere she goes. Her daughter just turned one and she has stolen every bit of formula her daughter ever used. It's insane she's never been caught. She might be kleptomaniac. She needs help. Mine is incredibly stupid but looking back reminds me of how actually crazy the whole situation was. When I was in the 6th grade my parents, mom and stepdad, got married and moved me to this very small, very religious, very tight knit community. My life changed immeasurably that year and I absolutely hated my new school and all the people in it. So our morning routine was parents get up at 6, wake me at 6.30. Both parents are out the door by 6.45 and I have to catch my bus at 7.15. Well 11 year old me figured out that I could just not catch my bus and my parents both working demanding jobs would not be home until 3 hours after I usually got home so they'd never know. The first day I skipped school was easy. By week 2 I realized I'd have to go back for exams. Especially the state exam which determined if you got to move to the next grade and obviously the school would want to know why I was absent. 
So I devise a plan, wherein I called the school pretending to be my mother and told them my poor daughter had mono and would be in and out as she felt better and I asked them to please change my contact number to my home phone. That way I could intercept any phone calls. And thus began the 6 weeks where I went to school only ever on days that I had exams. Unbeknownst to me one of my teachers wrote a note with my report card that were mailed to our house that said she was so proud of me for keeping up with my schoolwork despite being sick and out of class so often. I was in third period when I got called to the office to find my vice principal, principal, two very very angry parents, and a truancy officer waiting for me. I had to go to court because I had missed so many days and was given community service as punishment. I was also sent to in-school suspension, ISS, for the remainder of the year. It's still on my criminal record although since I was underage when it occurred the details are sealed but I was 100% convicted of truancy. Oh so my great aunt disappeared off the face of the earth after her daughter's wedding and nobody had any clue what happened. Foul play wasn't suspected or anything however her shotgun was missing. Well like a month ago we found out she died last year. She had apparently skipped jury duty to go to the wedding and instead of doing anything logical she straight up ran away and lived in hiding in a backwards town in Washington. No letters or anything she just decided that the most effective way to get around jury duty to go to a wedding was to live in hiding for 30 years. My brain does not compute this logic. My grandfather's cousin stabbed a waiter to death because he wouldn't let him use the employee's only restroom in his restaurant. My husband's dad killed the guy who his then girlfriend was cheating on him with. He was supposed to serve a life term but got out because of a clerical error. He did manual labor on a local park and apparently the guys who helped were supposed to get a reduced sentence. However he was not supposed to. I think, my husband talked about it once. Also, my husband's half brother, same murderous dad, killed his business partner. He would have gotten away with it however, he moved the body when he found out construction was going to start in that spot. And what were they going to build there? A prison. He's currently serving a life sentence. My husband has never met his half brother. He also has two half sisters from the same dad who are law abiding citizens. Two half sisters that didn't get caught. I worked at a movie theater when Back to the Future was originally released. We used to take the entire movie ticket instead of tearing them and resell them to the next group coming in. The old theater was massive. Sat 600 people. We probably made about $15k between two of us in month or so. Adjusted for inflation, it's about $37k. We were the richest high school kids in our town. This was a couple of generations back, early 20th century but there was this guy who was constantly getting drunk and harassing my great aunt. So, one of her male friends dressed up in an Easter bunny outfit, put a bat in its giant fake carrot and beat the dude with it. He got away with it but I'm sure it helped that half the community was waiting for the day the guy's liver finally gave out. Donnie duck out his butt, have a freaking carrot. I used to drive for my weed dealer. I was a new buyer but I never asked questions and was cool with him. His car broke down and asked if anyone could drive him. I said I would, and he liked that. I have my back windows tinted but not my front windows. I'd pick him up and we'd drive almost all day. It was pretty chill. He's give me free weed and pay me $250 a day. I still worked my part time delivery job so I was very happy. He got his car fixed and didn't need me to drive him around anymore. Which is fine, considering his ex snitched in him and he got busted a couple weeks later. An uncle robbed a bank, or was an accessory to the robbers. IDK. His brilliant escape when the police showed up was to go to the roof and jump off. He didn't do time, just had to go to the hospital for a broken leg. I'll have to ask my mom when I get a chance, she knows the story better than I do. Aim for the bushes. My dad told me he once snuck into a tire warehouse. He cut the alarm and came in through a window on the roof, and stole a bunch of tires. Cousin got busted robbing a bank, got sentenced to jail, proceeded to break out of jail with his cellmate and went on the run. Fast forward a few months and he's living in a hotel room with his cellmate. Cellmate orders a pizza to the room. Bad idea. Delivery guy recognized them and reported them to the police. They get arrested again and shortly after my cousin killed himself in prison. 
My cousin had a wife and a kid and got into a nasty coke habit. We don't bring him up anymore. I need to sleep soon. I read this too fast and saw broke out of jail with his cellmate living in hotel room and pizza and thought you were just describing the plot to Home Alone 2. My dad got into a bar fight around 21 or so, hit a guy so hard he killed him. He went to prison of course but while working along the road he stopped another prisoner that attacked a guard and tried to escape. My dad was released for that. He never drank after that and if he got angry he just walked out of the house to cool off. He turned 81 a week ago and he's the nicest, easiest going guy you would ever meet. He never judges anyone. He once said to me, we all make mistakes. For the record I only heard the story about tennis ago from my brother. He told him during a road trip. He lived in a small town and I have no idea what prison he was at or the official reason he was released but considering it was probably around 1961-62, they probably used whatever reason they wanted to for his release. Almost a con air situation. My aunt had a boyfriend, let's call him Mike, cause that was his name. He was always the life of the party, everyone loved him, always holding my aunt from behind and kissing her neck. A little too much PDA but hey, they were happy. Turns out Mike was abusive. Like, very abusive. Physically and mentally. The neck kissing was him whispering in her ear, berating my aunt for making a fool of herself dancing. My grandfather found out about the abuse, went over to Mike's place, knocked on the door. When Mike answered, my grandfather put a gun to his head and said if I find out you ever touch my daughter again I'll freaking kill you. Welp. A few weeks later my aunt shows up with a black eye and a sling. Mike, he was found dead on the roof of his apartment building the following weekend. We all have zero doubt it was my grandfather's doing. As a successful lawyer I am sure he had connections who could help. No one misses Mike. My uncle went to prison for chaining a cop to the back of his bike and driving down the highway. Poor fella. I bet he kept up for the first mile or so. Not sure if it should be considered a crime, but one of my great aunts was in an abusive marriage with a war vet who took to beating her and forcing her to play Russian roulette when he drank. One night she managed to rig the gun so when he took his turn he blew his brains out. She wasn't charged. I'm glad she survived. Many women don't. How scary that must have been for her. My mom's father was a Vietnam vet. He married my grandma he met while in Germany, adopted her oldest son and they had three daughters. He physically, emotionally, and sexually abused all of them. When they were toddlers, he'd wake them up at 5am for PT, like basic training for adults. When they walked into a room he was in, he'd throw knives at them to check their reflexes. When my aunt graduated high school, she moved out and he lost his mind. He kept trying to convince her to move back in, and actually convinced her to come home to talk about it. That day she was sitting on the couch and told him she would never come back. So, he pulled a gun shot her three times. Once in the hand as she was trying to block her heart, once in the stomach as she stood up, and once in the butt as she turned to run. Then he walked to his back bedroom, and shot himself twice, once in the heart and once in the head. I wasn't alive but I read the newspaper article and it was horrible. Side note, my family is really messed up BC my grandma would take us grandkids to his gravesite and tell us what a great man he was. My dad's side of the family grew up as New Hampshire Hicks. My grandfather was stabbed in two different bar fights and burned down an entire country club because he thought they were too stuck up. He was never caught and went on to earn a bronze and silver star in the Korean War, but unfortunately lost his leg too. Lie free or die. It's not a bad crime or anything, but it was illegal at the time. So, in Germany, up until a few years ago, we still had a general draft for the army, and a generation ago it was very hard to get out of it. My uncle was a hardcore pacifist, so going to the army wasn't an option for him. But being accepted as a conscientious objector at that time basically required you to be a devout Christian and use the Bible as an argument for why you couldn't kill another human. And my uncle was also atheist, he couldn't realistically object, didn't want to go to the army and didn't want to go to jail, too. So he waited, he got sent his draft notice, passed the physical and got a letter telling him to report to X company under Sergeant Y. He wrote back a reply, on rose colored paper, scented with perfume, 
about how much he was looking forward to serving under the strong leadership of Y, promising to obey every one of his orders, and that he can't wait to experience life in the barracks together with so many strong and muscular men. He was declared unfit for service shortly after. Now this is the kind of rule breaking I live to hear about. Cheeky bastard. My uncle was a small drug lord in Northern California in the 90s. He had a compound out in gold country, had to drive through three gates with guards to get to his house. I like never questioned it as a kid, just enjoyed heading up so I could fish in the stocked base pond, which also had snapping turtles, as a line of defense. He'd take me out shopping at the mall with a film canister full of coke that he'd take hits off of occasionally, shadowed by some bodyguards. One time we were out for a ride in his corvette going well over a hundred and got tagged by highway patrol. He talked his way out of the ticket, told the officer he was showing off for his nephew and got carried away. The officer thought it was hilarious, and told me it was lucky since he had a ton of illegal guns and drugs in the trunk and would have made a run for it. He got arrested when I was 15. It was a full blown. Feds descended upon the compound in helicopters and swung through the windows with flashbangs. The whole nine. He was arrested, and since if he snitched on anyone above him he was, very bluntly, a dead man. He took the rap, was extradited to Lee in VA to serve a bit over 10 years. All he asked for while he was there was protein powder. He got prison ripped, and apparently beat someone near to death with a sock full of quarters for cutting in front of him at the payphone. At some point in my life all four of my uncles on both sides and my dad have spent time in prison for drug related offenses, but this particular uncle takes the cake. I hate to break it to you, but your uncle was not a small drug lord. My dad, when he was much younger and infinitely more stupid regularly used to drink drive with his friends. It was the early 70s, and no one really cared. To hear him speak about it now, he can't believe how stupid he was. One night, he and his friend were out drinking. They heard there was a party going on at a pub across town and decided to head over. On the way they go past a large club with a queue of people waiting to go in. My dad decides to show off a bit and pull a skid. He miscalculated, hit a curb and flipped the car, sliding down the road on his roof. The car stops. They get out and leg it, to the cheers of the people in the queue. They get the bus back home and immediately call the police to report the car is stolen. The police knew what had happened, but couldn't prove anything. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.